So, momentum tutorial, tutorials, Mr. Duick, where am I here? New page. Momentum. Uh, the written section that's going to have three questions. One is going to be a collision at an angle. Like, like, Mr. Duick, like question one from quiz two. Something like that. Uh, as an example, <clears throat> Let me see if I can find a good picture of one from the old review. Blah, 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 blah. Sure. Something like this. Okay. There's going to be a collision where things veer off at angles, and the angles are going to be yucky, not nice 90 degrees. There are really two ways I can give you this question, Dorothy. I can either have two masses separate, one standing still, one moving. So before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both mass one. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both, both separate. That's one way I can give this to you. Or I can give you both of these velocities and ask what's the incoming. We did one like that on the quiz. Or I can have two incoming and have them stick together and move off in a direction. So my question is, are you folks OK with these? I'll solve this one or show you the answers for this one if you want. In terms of your review, then, I'm talking about stuff like <clears throat> Number one, show me angles, show me angles, show me angles, show me angles, show me angles. Ah, uh, 14, right? There's your classic one right there. Sixteen, although sixteen is a bit of a twist, they give you all of the speeds and they ask you to find the unknown mass, but okay. Fair game-ish. Um, that's an explosion, slightly different. Explosion, uh, 34, another great example. So here, instead of, instead of two objects, first one moving, second one standing still and bouncing off each other, they both come in at angles and they move off in a nice straight line stuck together. But it's going to be a similar approach. That's tricky, although nerdily cool. Uh, nope. <coughs> nope. So there's a few of those you can try, and there's some in the other review that I gave you as well. Uh, so something like... Unfortunately, the questions don't quite, because I was cutting and pasting, they're not necessarily in order, but like this one here, which uh, I eventually called question number, I'll find it here, 11. Uh, that's a fair, that's one. Uh, here's another angle one. Oh, this one was a bit trickier. I think it's a little overkill. So you can expect that, okay? Do you want me to do this one or are you okay? I can do it, certainly. <coughs> do you mind? I'm going to shrink the diagram down just a tiny bit so I can get it all on one page. 
Again, if you want to write this down, you can, or if you want to watch, I can print this up for you after the fact. Okay. Uh, as shown in the above diagram, we have a puck moving due east at 3.5 meters per second. Collides with a stationary puck of mass 1.6 after the collision. Okay, we have a collision. This looks like a job for conservation of momentum. The amount of momentum beforehand equals the amount of momentum afterwards. And I'll give you one mark for writing that. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Before the collision? Both before, right? So it's going to be... Momentum of object one initial, yoink. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Both, separate or stuck together? You guys are all writing this down. Would you like me to just pause and let you copy this diagram down? Some of you are. I'll pause for about 30 seconds. Those of you that are at home, I'm just going to pause the video. You can hit pause on YouTube if you want to write this diagram down. Now we're back. Uh, so before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, after the collision? Both, separate. So uh, mass one, momentum of one final and momentum of two final. Now I'm gonna draw a little picture, let's see, because now there's angles. Up until now, this is the same as we did last year in Physics 11. You might not have used the same approach, I don't know if Mr. Kamosi taught it that way, but I know I did, I, I go very systematic. And if it was in a nice straight line, we could just go M1 V1 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final, and just add and subtract to our heart's content. Gabby, let to the right be positive to the left be negative, or if it was vertical up and down, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, let down be negative and up be positive, but be consistent. For example, if you were hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, doing a momentum change for bouncing a ball. Uh, draw a picture when there's angles. So that apparently equals this, plus that. Uh, what was my initial momentum coming in? Looks like if I go mass times velocity, I get 0.77 times 3.5. My initial momentum is 2.695, and I wouldn't round off if you didn't have to because you're using this to get better data, so don't go sig figs yet. And I notice in my diagram, this angle right here is 30 degrees. And this is momentum mass 1, which is 0.77 times 1.3. 0.77 times 1.3. 1.001, kind of nice numbers. And afterwards, I have, don't know. So on your test, I'm going to give you the same situation. You won't know one of these three. You either, well, you probably won't know one of the angle ones. But because you know what the resultant is, you know that this plus this has to give you a nice straight line. You can Nico, draw a good vector diagram knowing what it looks like. You can say, look, if I go 1.001 up at 30 degrees, and I go down, I know to stop drawing that vector right there. Don't go further, don't go shallower. Why? Because I know apparently when I added these two together, tip to tail, the answer was 2.695. Oh, with an angle of 30 degrees right there. And here is my mystery momentum of object two final. This one was a tiny bit easier than some of the ones that I gave you on the quiz in that the angle popped into my diagram quite naturally. Sometimes you had to zangle zeds or flip an angle. And that's fair game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Sokotoa? No. I, I, I hope you're appreciating how nice Sokotoa is. Sokotoa is cross multiply and you're done. Sine law and cosine law takes a little bit more time, although hopefully you're getting good at it. 
It's going to look like this. Remember, the sine law and the cosine law are both on your formula sheet. So if you freeze, if you blank out, they are on the same page as the circumference of the whatever and the mass of the whatever. They're all on there. Uh, anyways, it's momentum of object two final squared equals 1.001 squared plus 2.695 squared minus 2 times 1.001 .001 times 2.695, yoink, need a bit more room, times the cos of 30. I've got a good calculator, so I like typing this whole thing in in one fell swoop. And then I always say, that seems a little big. What I'm trying to reinforce with you guys is common mistake is don't is forgetting to square root. So please make sure you remember to square root because this finds momentum squared. Is it 1.89? You know what? I got an answer key right here, Duke. Uh, let's go back to where it was. This was it here, yeah? Did I get 1.895? Good, I did. Always nice to know that I'm right. Uh, I get... The momentum of object two final is 1.8954. I'll carry a few extra sig figs. <clears throat> uh, if I'm being fussy, by the way, you'll notice I dropped the vector symbol on the momentum of object two final because I haven't attached a direction. That's my subtle way of reminding me, Diana, on my next line, because they want me to find the velocity, on my next line, I am going to write velocity to final, and I am going to deliberately add the vector, and that's to remind me, hey, don't forget to find an angle. The speed, and on your multiple choice, I think a nice question to shorten things down would be this same question, but just say find the speed which means you don't have to do the sine law, cos uh, the sine law garbage after. Finding the speed is uh, take this momentum and do what? Divide by, Divide by the mass. Now, the mass of object 2 was uh, 1.6. So it's going to be 1.8954 divided by 1.6 divided by 1.6. There's my speed, 1.18 meters per second. That would make a nice multiple choice. At. Or another nice multiple choice would be, instead of saying find the speed, just find the direction, which would mean once you did the trig, I think you could go straight to the sine law and not bother dividing by the velocities or anything like that. That's another way to shorten this down. But in this written question, they wanted both. Now, here is my resultant. Sorry, not my resultant. Here's my missing momentum, what I'm trying to find. For me to get a direction, I need to put it coming from either a vertical or a horizontal line. And you'll notice there is no vertical or horizontal line. I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to add that horizontal line and to find that angle, which is not in my diagram. Or is it? Right? The Z thing. So I'm going to find that angle in my triangle, but I'm going to use this angle in my answer. This angle in my answer is what of what? South of north, east of west, what of what? South of? South of east, right? The of is the horizontal or vertical part. And what comes before? You go east, go south of east. So I'll leave this little space here. It is going to be south of east. Now I just got to get the magnitude sine law. I'll go green. Sine of mystery angle divided by what's across from it, 1.001, .001, equals sine of the only angle in the triangle that I know divided by what's across from it, which I didn't know, but now I do. Uh, don't use the velocity. Use the momentum. It's the momentum that's conserved in the triangle. I'm going to use the 1.8954. Cross multiply, I'll get 1.001 .001 sine 30, close bracket, divided by 1.8954, inverse sine of that. 
and I hope it's 15.3 degrees. Yep, 15 degrees south of east. Whoop, south of east. 15.3 degrees south of east. Now here's the good news. Lots of ways to get part marks on this. Here's the bad news. Lots of ways to make sloppy mistakes. This is, believe it or not, not the longest question you'll get all year. It's the third longest question you'll get all year. But lots of room to make mistakes. All right, and Dorothy, you know what I mean by those. Forgetting to square root, uh, sloppy calculator. I, generally, kids wrap their brain around the method. And I, I'm hoping, like, I, I like this. This is the physics of car crashes. And I have to admit, I do find this kind of fascinating and interesting. This is one of the things when I started reteaching physics 12 after my 15-year absence <coughs> from high school, I still remembered how to do momentum. I was nuts about it. Some of the other stuff I had to relearn, but this I still knew how to do. So you can expect some kind of non-right angle collision. Okay? Second question. Explosion. Boom. Okay? Now, the explosion is going to be at nice right angles. Like from the ultimate review, you want some explosions? Well, this is the scholarship one I said I would mention, by the way. I think number 47 is perfectly fine. Did the first person dive due east? Yeah. Did the second person dive due north? Yeah. Are those at nice right angles to each other? Yeah, I, I don't know why this was a scholarship. This is an explosion to me. There are three masses. Oh, they give you every mass. That's even easier than the one that I gave you on your quiz. On your quiz, you had to do some subtraction to figure out a missing mass, and they were yucky. So 47 is a great example. What speed and what direction does the raft start to move? Oh, I can tell you roughly the direction. If your initial momentum is zero and someone goes north and someone goes east, I'm pretty sure that raft is going south and west-ish. Right? And remember that when you're doing an explosion, what you're really saying is your initial momentum was zero, so your final momentum was zero. That's assuming you're doing an explosion of a stationary object. There is, I think, one question on your review where the object was moving and then exploded. So your initial momentum wasn't zero. Your initial momentum was whatever it had when it was moving. Your final momentum would be the same thing. But I think that one, Jake, is everything's in a nice straight line. You can just let to the right be positive, to the left be negative. I don't think that one was a trig one. It was, it's a space capsule one. I think I'm remembering it or something like that. And I'll show you that one in a second. So anyways, 47 is totally fair game. Let me find another good explosion here. Um, <coughs> Oh, this is the one I was thinking about. So this is an explosion, but this is a nice linear explosion. Here, you would not say that your final momentum was zero. Your final momentum is whatever your initial momentum is, and you better let to the right be positive. And if this is moving to the right, it's positive. It might be blown backwards to the left. I don't know. I'd have to crunch the numbers and find out. <coughs> uh, show me an explosion. 10 is an explosion, but that's technically a linear explosion. What do I mean by an explosion? Hey, your initial momentum was zero. You know what your final momentum's got to be then? Zero. But this is nice and linear. Collision. Collision. <laughs> 20 is an explosion, but a nice linear one. So your initial momentum was zero. Uh, 20 as a twist, it asks how much work was done on the blocks by the spring. Work is what times what? I don't see a force or a distance there anywhere. Work is also the area under a force versus distance graph. Seest thou a graph there anywhere? No. What was our third definition of work? Did you say nay? Nice. What was our third definition of work? Uh, you know what? I bet you there is a, oh yeah. Because initially, what's my kinetic energy? Zero. I think when you do the momentum, you'll find the final velocities. Then you can find your total kinetic energy. Energy is a scalar. Don't be letting to the left be negative and to the right be positive for the energies. And that'll tell you how much work was done. I, I, 
I'm going to listen to carefully. I'm just going to say I like the question because it combines two units. I'm not necessarily saying I like the question, I like the question, I like the question. Although there is going to be one question where I ask you to take something that you found with the momentum and do something with energies. Okay. Uh, oh, here you go. Uh, 22, this is sort of an explosion, except here, your initial momentum isn't zero, uh, but this is only exploding into two pieces. So this plus this has to equal that. What number is that, 22? Right, for, so for 22, this momentum plus this momentum has to equal that momentum. It doesn't equal zero, however. Right? Downwards plus up diagonally has to equal that 84. But that's also an explosion. I gave you two explosions in your quizzes. We did a several in our notes. Uh, Really, is the scholarship one the only good explosion question? Oh, come on, Mr. Duick. It's got to be another good one. I guess 33 is kind of a reverse explosion. In 33, what's your final momentum? Zero. So what's your initial momentum have to be? What they're asking is uh, to make that work out to zero. What is our, So I guess 33 It's kind of an explosion in reverse. Sure, that works. That's got three objects, and that's coming in at right angles. Uh, again, here's another explosion, but uh, this is linear. I think in this one, though, when you crunch the numbers, the smaller chunk of space capsule ends up moving backwards after the explosion. Don't quote me on that, though. I haven't done that one for a while. Nope. Nope. You know what? I guess only, wow, 47? Really, Mr. Duick? So, like, was it 47? Yeah. Like number 47. I think there's a couple of explosions in the other review that I sent you if you're looking for more practice. In fact, I know there is. Okay. Uh, the third question. Combined momentum energy question. Like the ballistic pendul pendulum or the like the ballistic pendulum or the colliding roller coasters. You're going to have a question like the ballistic pendulum or the colliding roller coasters. Some of you are, uh, you gotta let me have a little fun on this job, folks. Uh, examples. Jake just got, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, Started nodding his head, I get it. Um, I saw a bunch. I think it was further. Oh, uh, 13. Uh, sorry, 19. Like number 19. Example number 19. Oh, and that's even got a little using principles of physics question. Sure. Um, there was more than this, Mr. Duick. I saw several. Oh, uh, 30. Thirty-nine. Uh, let me double check. Yeah. Thirty-nine. Mm -hmm. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I already said forty-seven was fair game. Uh, nah, forty-eight. No. Cool, but. Uh, no. Someone asked me a question. 
Can you do one of the like, examples of an explosion? Can I go up to number 30? Yeah, uh, no. I won't do the ones from your review. I'll find one from the old review and walk through it with you, and that way you can practice the ones from your review. What with your, what, would that be good? Uh, we're doing a combined one, and then someone asked for an explosion. I'll see if I can find one from here, too. Uh, here's a good explosion one. Just, do you have your review in front of you? Can you look at number 47? Just make sure, are the numbers identical? Because this is the same question as number 47. Um, is it? I think so. Oh, okay, rats. Uh -huh. I, it was looking familiar to me. I'll, I'll make up a different yeah. one then. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for a combined energy momentum question. And you can just tell by the diagram because you see a change in height and you see everything in a nice straight line. Oh, there's a, you know what? Remind me to do this one. This is a nice explosion question. Uh, ballistic pendulum. But I said, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Really? Is one on here? No. Wow. Which one were you saying, Nico? Number 30 or number 39? I'm going to change the numbers. I'll use it as my diagram, though. Uh, Um, we'll use this as my diagram, but let's change the velocity. Pick a velocity. Uh, 30 meters per second. Woo, nice. Let's put some speed on here. Can I go 32 so that way I can go two sig figs? Otherwise, I've got to go 30.0. So you're saying this and this. Okay, that'll change the question. We could change the mass. Yeah. Can you see there are two parts? Collision, momentum, and change in height, energy. Is that okay? You see, I think how high these two move off together depends on how much kinetic energy that they have. That depends on how fast they're traveling after the collision. That depends on momentum. The collision, is it in a nice straight line? So no funky trig? Okay. We're going to start off the same old, same old. We're going to say, okay. The sum of all the... Oh. Change in Mr. Duick? Was that coming from? The sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1. Mass 1, V1 initial. Normally I would write momentum 1 initial, but I'm trying to cut corners a little bit because this is linear. I can cheat a little bit. <coughs> they collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? <clears throat> Let's get the final speed. I can just go straight and divide because it's linear. Uh, it's going to be m1 v1 initial divided by m1 plus m2. m1 was 360. V1, you said 30, I said let's make it 32 so I don't, don't have to worry about sig figs. Uh, divided by uh, 360 plus 240. Is that okay so far, Nico? Mm -hmm. They're going to move off at, oh, that worked out fairly nicely, 19.2 meters per second. Am I wrong? I think I'm right. Three, it looks good. Okay. Uh, by the way, if I wanted to add a twist, instead of giving you this velocity, I could take this car, put it on a hill up here and tell you how high the hill was. Use energies to find how fast it's traveling at the bottom of the hill, then collide, 
then move up the hill. That'd be a nice way to, because I think this is a little easy. I think if I, I'd probably add that one extra step. Otherwise, it's just straight plug and chug in my mind. Or I would add some kind of a using principles of physics question to this, like they do a number, I think, 30 or in, in one of the other ones, they add one. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> what? what? We good? Uh, now we go to energies. How do I know to go to energies? I, there's a change in height, and it's a yucky, curvy path. There's no way I would want to try and tackle that with unit one kinematics. Where everything was vectors. I want a scalar approach. Energy. Uh, conservation of energy. So I'm going to go kinetic initial and potential initial equals <coughs> kinetic final, potential final. Nico, why can't I do that and that? So starting on the ground, check. And the For a split second, they'll come to a stop. Good. Which turns this equation actually much nicer. Uh, it's going to be a half m v initial squared. Which v initial? V final from my collision. That's one of the tricky parts. You got a clue in finals become initials and vice versa. You got to go. Okay. Yeah. It'll all be online, and I'll email this out. Uh, m g h final. You'll notice, I can't quite say the masses don't matter. The masses mattered in the collision. They didn't cancel in the collision. Ah, but it turns out in the energy section, once you get going, then that doesn't make a difference. That's cool. Uh, final height is going to be V initial squared divided by 2G. 19.2 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. This might work out to 1, ex no, squared, never mind. It's gonna, is this going to work out to 19.2 even? No, 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. I thought this was going to cancel. Not quite. 18.8. Units? Uh, meters. Is that OK? <clears throat> Other ways I could make this tougher, I could have this guy rolling at a slow speed as well, so that over here on this side, you would have two momentums to deal with, and you would divide both of them by m1 plus m2. OK. If they're rolling to the right, it's still a positive. Um, I don't think I would, though. Would you ever have it where the first car was moving right and the second car was moving left and then they collided went up the hill? I don't think I'd do that as a written. I think that would be fair game as a fairly nasty multiple choice. So if I have that first car coming in at like 32 and the second car going left at like 3 so that I know that they're going to go like this. Slow car coming in. Bam! And sure, that'd be a nice multiple choice, I guess. I don't think I've given one like that, but I'll if I ever rewrite my tests, I'll probably add that. That'd be a good one. So would that be momentum one initial minus momentum two initial? Well, I've got to be careful. It'd still be momentum one initial plus momentum two initial, but momentum two initial would be negative. negative. Yeah. You're always adding. It's, it's always the total. Total means add. Total momentum. Just one to the left is negative. Dorothy had wanted me to do an explosion, and I did. Did people still want me to do an explosion, or are we okay? I think we're good. Sorry? Yeah, we're good? Um, stuff I like. <coughs> number two. Sorry, number, wow. Number one. I don't know why I said number two. Number one. Um, sure, two is okay. I'm going to. I think if I give you a written straight on thingy or if an easier one, I'm going to probably as a part B, I, I, I think I would probably break this into two parts. I might say something like, what's the final velocity of the 8.6 A? Uh, B, how much kinetic energy or something like that. Anyways, um, Four, but hopefully you know that number four is change in momentum. You know, hopefully you just know the answer is B, right? You need to know that impulse is another word for what? Change in momentum. You need to know those are interchangeable. Um, I 
I have one in mind here, Mr. Duick. Uh, 12. Boy, I think I asked the correct unit for impulse like five times in this review. I must have been cutting and pasting because I 17. I'm pretty sure I saw that early. Anyways, make sure you know your units, right? Apparently, I felt that was fairly important. Uh, 18. I already did say uh, 19, yes. Twenty-one. Sorry, I was just thinking 25, not, I like it. I'm going, that's a great diagram. I need to steal that because I can use that for nice questions. I don't know how to do a diagram of a fancy schmancy car like that, but I know how to rip it from the document and reuse it. Uh, 26. So here's what I was saying. Here in number 26, they're not actually asking you to find V final. They're just saying, hey, find the direction, which means I think once you had your triangle drawn, you could probably just start going straight to the trig, skipping the dividing by the mass or anything like that, right? Um, 28. I already said 30. Uh, 31. So I, I've given you a few hints. Somewhere there's going to be some kind of a linear straight line <coughs> collision where an object changes direction. You better let one way be positive, one way be negative. And I'm going to ask you either for the impulse. What's another word for impulse? Change momentum. Or I'm going to say, here's the force involved. Find the time. Or here's the time involved. What was the average force? But to do both of those, you have to find the impulse first because impulse is not only change in momentum, final minus initial, it's also F delta T, right? Um, 34. I already said 33, like a reverse explosion. I already said 34. Thirty-six. You need to understand what's conserved and what's not conserved. What's conserved? Momentum. Total energy. Is kinetic energy conserved? No, sometimes it becomes potential or heat, uh, but total energy is conserved. Huh? Oh, well, it, it, I, I taught you, I gave you tricks to interpret graphs. Just looking at 38, it says, what's the slope of this graph? It would be momentum divided by time. What would momentum divided by time be? Is there an equation that has momentum and time in it? I think there is, isn't there? Don't you guys have an equation that has momentum and time in it? Yeah? Oh, so what would momentum divided by time be? Force. I think force, because when you get the t by when you divide the t over, I think you get an f. Yeah, uh, I guess technically, according to this question, the net force. Okay, fine, but definitely not mass or velocity or work. I already said I like thirty-nine. Forty-two. Again, making sure you understand what's conserved and what's not. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Forty-three is a bit tricky, by the way. I, I'll just talk about it. I don't like forty-three, but it's in your review. The key thing in number 43 is the phrase perfectly elastic. If you know the collision is perfectly elastic, 
you know that after the collision, they split up at 90 degrees. The question doesn't tell you that, but when you draw your triangle, you know the angle is 90 degrees, which means, by the way, Sokoto and Pythagoras work very well for that one. It makes it way easier, but you have to... Anyways, it's a fudged question. I stuck it on there because kids were having trouble. They used to love asking on the provincial exam perfectly elastic equations where they didn't give the kids the angle and kids freaked. So I stuck this on my review to jog their memory. But I was never a big fan of it since there's no provincial. So there's the ones that I like. Are there any more that you would like me to go over that you're saying, hey, Mr. Duick, I could use a little bit of assistance? Uh, from the old one, I like, if you're looking for a good explosion from the old review, try that one. That's great. That's got three fragments at right angles. So if you're looking to practice one more explosion. Uh, okay, you guys are good. Let me just pause the video first of all. Who would like a copy?